Hi, this is Shaheen at Moto Corsa. Congratulations on the purchase of your Ducati Multistrada V4S. This is gonna be a little tutorial on how to go through this motorcycle, especially the electronic bits that stump some people. So I'm gonna try and make things as easy and simple as possible. Follow along, and if you have any other questions, don't be shy about calling and asking. We'll make sure that you have a good ownership experience on this bike, and it all begins with understanding its little gadgetry. Okay, let's talk about the button layout on the motorcycle. We'll start with the right side where the throttle is. So you have three sets of buttons here. The top one is for the heated hand grips. Now the Multistrada V4S comes with the standard. So all you have to do is press it once to get it started. And as you hit the button, it'll toggle through the medium, uh, hottest or lowest setting. I don't know why I went backwards on that one, but basically low, medium, high, off. Uh, the center button is going to be your emergency shutoff and on and off switch for the actual motorcycle. So this is your ignition. And then the bottom button is a looks like a light switch. And what that is, is it'll do two different functions. One of them is to turn the daytime running lamps on and off if you don't want to use the automatic function on that one. And the other function is if you have the Ducati Performance auxiliary lights, if you hold the button down for about two seconds, It'll turn them on. If you turn it off again, a couple of seconds, it'll turn off and that's it for the right side. All right, the left side is where it gets a little more complicated. A lot more buttons as you see. So I guess the Ducati set this up this way because there's no throttle here to deal with and you have your clutch, but since the bike has got quick shift, I don't really find myself using the clutch for anything more than first gear. So you got, let's go over everything. We're gonna start from the sort of the top and go down. You've got your emergency flash for your four ways I guess and then you have your passing lights if you want to turn them on uh, permanently you just press forward with it otherwise if you want to turn it off backs one more time and then if you want to pass somebody just press it in with your trigger finger and it'll turn on and off you've got your cruise control button here uh, and just like a car if you're used to cruise control it's the same basic functions on and off uh, you have your set button and your resume button and then your up and down for uh, turning the speed up and down on the motorcycle. There's actually going to be an indicator on the display, on the dash display, which will show you the miles per hour or kilometers if you're using kilometers uh, of where you're at. And every press up and down will switch it one mile or kilometer an hour up and down for you. You'll notice a plus and minus button next to that. That is for the active cruise control. Again, in the US market, the Ducati Multistrada V4S comes with the cruise control uh, with the active setting with the radar already on there so when the cruise control is on and you have that situation already on the motorcycle with the active cruise control radar plus and minus will dictate how far you are from the car or vehicle in front of you so if you want more distance you keep uh, hitting plus if you want less you hit minus and it'll actually lessen the distance between the vehicle in front of you and yourself next to that you've got your uh, what looks like a suspension and then your mode switch. So the suspension, now you're going to get a little more interesting. This is going to be for all of your preset preloads. We're going to go later on into how you can set those up if you want to get really, really kind of finicky with that and get really granular, but this is for kind of a quick setup. So if you hit it once, it's going to show you the options for rider, rider baggage, rider passenger, rider passenger baggage, and then one of my favorites is the actual auto setup where it'll always level the motorcycle for you. All right, so next we're gonna move into these two little buttons. First one we'll go over is the one with a little suspension emblem on there. So this is going to be for the quick setup while you're riding. We're gonna go over the more minute details here later, but for time being, this little button, if you press it once, it'll bring up the suspension um, preload setup. You're gonna use this joystick down here for a lot of things that we're talking about. So first you press this and it brings up the screen and then the joystick allows you to go up and down and select between rider, rider baggage, rider passenger, and rider passenger baggage. Kind of a neat thing because you can kind of on the fly change how much preload that you have on the motorcycle. So if you're riding by yourself, you can just set it on this if you start carrying some baggage with you and put some weight on there, you can go to this setup. And then if you're carrying a passenger and so on and so forth. And what's neat is you can do this on the fly. So once you hit this button and this screen comes up, you can select the next one with the joystick and then press in with the joystick and the motorcycle will select the appropriate preload that you've already sort of preset for yourself based on how much you weigh. Um, so next that we're gonna go into is the mode button. This is gonna be a really popular one with all Multistrada riders. Again, you press the button, 
and use the joystick to go between urban, sport, touring, and enduro. If you change your mind, by the way, you can always go joystick left and get out of this. But we're going to go back into mode again, and we're going to pick sport. Now, if you are riding the motorcycle and you try to uh, do this, you're going to notice that the bike is going to tell you, we're going we're gonna to pull the throttle in, and we're going to choose one, and it's going to say close throttle. And then you close the throttle, and boom, it'll select it for you. So the beauty of that is that you can do it on the fly. Ducati has done this for safety purposes so that you don't go from, let's say, minimum or medium engine power to high power without you actually modulating that throttle. So once again, you're going to hit the mode button. You're going to select whichever one you want. You've got the throttle open as if you're riding. You select it, and it'll tell you... Well, if the throttle's not on, it won't tell you anything. It'll just go into the next mode. So a little bit of a neat thing. It takes a little bit of practice for some people to get comfortable with it, but it's it's pretty easy to do, and you can do it on the fly. If you're just parked and you're not on the fly, you just change your mind. You want to go a little bit faster than Enduro mode. You go into Sport mode, and boom, bike's ready to go. It changes everything accordingly. Now, you can kind of see quickly when we press that button that there are different options for engine, traction control, ABS, wheelie control, front and rear suspension, and a preload, and whether the quick shifter is on or off. You can really change every one of these to your particular riding style by going into the main menu and changing each riding mode, and we'll go into that in a second. So we're going to exit this, and we're going to get into the main menu here in a second. First things first, though, you'll notice on the dash there are two different... Actually, there's a lot of information on there, but the ones that we're really going to concentrate on are the top left and the bottom left of the screen for now. Uh, as I, as you can see, there is kind of a red highlight on the left of the top left screen. That means that that is a spot that we're going to go through. So as we use the joystick, you'll notice that it toggles through the options on that side. If you want to skip down to the bottom and work with your mileage or trip meters, you hold the joystick down for a couple of seconds and boom, it jumps. Now once it's jumped, you can use the joystick and just toggle through all this stuff. So you'll know as you're, if you're a multi, multi strata owner that things like your trip time, your average consumption, your uh, range, everything is going to be based on your trip one. So if you go into trip one, as I'm going through it, and press the joystick in, it'll ask you if you want to reset the trip one info. If you don't want to do it, you can go joystick right, and it'll change your mind. But if you do want to do it, you can hit yes, and now it's zeroed out, and you'll notice consumption is zero, average speed is zero, trip time, you know, trip one time is zero, and trip two is still there. Uh, this bike currently only has four miles on it since it's new, but um, kind of gives you an idea. So. Um, if you want to jump out of the screen, you hold the joystick up for two seconds and we're back on this big menu here. On this menu, you have things like the settings menu, lap timer, heated seat for the actual rider. The passenger has their own separate uh, physical button for their seat. Again, the US version of the Multistrada V4S comes standard with the heated seats on it as well, which is a great thing. If you want to change your heated seat for the rider, uh, you'll see when you highlight it, it's nice and white. Uh, you press in on the joystick and now you can go low or high or off if you want to. If you want to select either one of those, you go up to them, press in on the joystick and you'll see on the bottom right of the screen, now it's got two little wavy buttons on there that shows you that the, it's on high. If you want to go on low, just one little wavy and then on off, no wavies at all. And again, we're going to press joystick left, exit, and then you have phone. If the phone is already set up on there, we'll show you how to do that. Music, again, if the phone is set up on there, uh, it'll be able to go through your uh, music. Adaptive cruise control, whether you want it on or off. Ducati Connect, again, the phone has to be attached to it, and I will kind of go over that a little bit. This is something that confuses some people. We'll try and simplify it for you as much as possible. Volume control, again, for the phone. And back to the settings menu. Now, this is where you really get into the deep and nitty gritty. All right, now let's go to the settings menu. Now, it goes without saying, you can't do any of the stuff that we're talking about while the bike is rolling. In fact, Ducati will not let you highlight this uh, when the bike is rolling. It's meant to be done in the comfort of your garage or your favorite hangout space uh, so you can get to your bike better. So, we go over settings menu, you press in with the joystick and you come into this little screen here. Now, you can see a lot of information here. Uh, we'll start with the top. 
So you've got your writing mode, which is the most popular one, which is what we're gonna spend the most time on here. Info display, fuel indicator, daytime running lamps, the backlight of the settings menu, your pin code, that's right. These bikes are keyless and you can put a personal identif identification number on it so that uh, just in case your key dies, you can still turn the bike on and off. Uh, most of your Ducati dealerships will have extra batteries around. They tend to last a pretty long time, but it's always good to, you know, give it a little once over. The screen will give you a warning if the battery's starting to run low so you don't get stranded anywhere. But again, the idea of the pin code is just in case that happens, you can still turn the bike on and off. Blind spot detection. That's right, the US market motorcycle has the rear facing uh, radar system for the blind spot detection. On the mirrors, uh, there is a really, really bright set of LEDs and they will come on really, really brightly to get your attention uh, so that you don't hopefully run into anybody as you are changing lanes. So lovely thing. Uh, it's something I never thought I needed until I had it on this bike and I really, really love it and I think you will too. Date and time, uh, your good Ducati dealer should set that up for you, but this is where you can set it up for yourself in case it's not done. Uh, service, this is gonna be somewhere that your authorized Ducati dealership is, you know, service department is gonna go through to let them reset the lights and do what they need to do to get your bike up to date for you. Lap, that's right, it's a Ducati. It can still go on the track and you can set up some lap time. So, you know, have some fun with it if you uh, if you want to. This bike is unbelievably capable out there. Uh, tire calibration, in case you go to a different style of tire, whether it's super knobby or super sporty, you can sort of calibrate it so the bike runs accordingly. And again, Bluetooth, that's right. You can set your phone up on this thing and we'll go over that as well. Turn signals, uh, this is gonna be to help you set up whether the turn signal is uh, canceled automatically or not in language based on you know, whatever language you speak. Measurement units is going to be kilometers versus miles per hour, uh, Fahrenheit versus Celsius, etc., etc. And info, not much into info, actually we'll go in there. It's going to let you know what kind of battery life you've got and how many RPMs the bike is sitting at currently. Now, if you notice, I pressed the joystick in to get into the info in any other uh, you know mode in the uh, in the actual uh, info area. The the if you want to change that, if you don't want to be in the thing that you've selected, just go joystick left. I went a little too far, I went all the way out, so we're going to go back into settings menu, and let's go into riding mode. So, we're going to press that, it's going to give all of our different riding modes uh, here that we have in the Ducati Multistrada, which is four of them. You've got Sport, Touring, Enduro, and Urban. Pretty self-explanatory. Sport is if you want to have all the fun uh, straight out of the box. Sport mode is going to have the high engine setting. Um, so again, we're using the joystick to kind of go through this whole thing. And if we want to select one, we're going to go in with the joystick. We're going to select whichever one we want. Out of the box, high is where we're at. So if we're going to select that, we'll just press in with the joystick. And if we want to get out of it, just press left quickly. And then traction control. I love the little drawings on the actual display because it'll let you know where you're at. So on Sport out of the box, it's at four. Some people like to have it lower. And as you go lower on traction, it kind of tells you, hey, now you're at off-road. Uh, and if you can turn it off all the way too, if you're, if you're brave enough. But kind of performance, road, and then as you go up higher into the wet segment, and now it's really, really conservative. Um, most people like it at a three or a four, a little more sport rated. So let's say we pick Sport, press N and it's chosen it, and then we go to the left. ABS, you've got, again, you've got one, two, or three. Uh, typically, most people leave it on one if they just want front ABS, that turns off the rear ABS altogether. Two has got some cornering ABS to it, and three is super safe and stable. Most people use that on their touring and their urban settings, so we'll go back to two on this one to keep it kind of fun and performance, slate rated, but safe. Ducati wheelie control, uh, lots of options here. It goes from off all the way to eight. Uh, eight is super conservative. It's very, very safe and stable. It's not really gonna let you take the wheel off the ground at all. A lot of people like to have it around a two or three on the sport mode, so we'll keep this one kind of fun. We'll go two. Ducati quick shift, pretty simple, on or off. That's all there is to it. The quick shifter is really smooth on this bike. You basically give it positive throttle and upshift. Uh, to go up in the gears and negative throttle and downshift to go down in the gears. If you want to downshift to pass somebody, you just keep it on positive throttle and kick it, kick it down into the next gear lower and it'll match the revs for you and uh, just keep it really smooth. It's very, very interesting and awesome and I've never turned mine off. So, you know, do with that as you will. Uh, 
Suspension, ah, now we're getting a little bit more complicated. So we go into the suspension, you can choose rear or front. And now you can set it to basically comfort all the way to super performance rated. Everyone's gonna have something different. So out of the box, it's on medium, just to kind of keep things friendly with the motorcycle. And again, depending on your weight, same thing with the rear. You can choose where you wanna be on this one. And then left joystick to get out, left joystick one more time. And then the preload. So the preload setting, if you remember when we were talking about the left uh, switch gears, you have a little suspension button on here. And uh, when you press that, it gave you the options for rider, rider bags, rider passenger, rider passenger bags. This here is where you set it up to have it exactly how you want it, depending on what you weigh and what your riding style is. So if you come into here and press one of these, now you can really kind of play with how much preload you want on there. Obviously the higher the preload, the more the suspension is jacked up, the more it's set up for a heavier uh, rider. So be kind of careful with that. You don't want to go overboard with it. It's always best to either talk to a suspension specialist or if you're going to play with it yourself, just do it one sort of a click, so to speak, at a time. So each button uh, or rather each number up or down is uh, considered one click up or down. So play with this a little bit at a time and just kind of ride the bike and, and uh, pay close attention to how it's handling. And again, always uh, make sure you talk to your local professional just to do the right thing. So let's say you've picked the number you like, 17 for, the, for this one. You go left and then you can go into the rider bags, rider passenger, rider passenger bags and change all those as, uh, as it pertains to you or your weight and your riding style. And then we go out of that one and the magic button default. That's right. This motorcycle has no wrong answers. If you change everything and you didn't like what you did, you just go to default and it tells you to wait and it's restored. Now it's back to factory settings. So you can play with this all you want uh, on each one of the settings and you can completely change it back to default if you didn't like what you did. So that's how you do the riding modes. And you can do that exact same thing with each one of them from sport to touring to enduro to urban. Now out of the box, um, sport is for faster riding. Touring is great for, uh, you know, obviously touring. If you've got the bike bagged up and you're gonna do some kind of a several hundred miles to a thousand miles of riding, I always explain touring mode as I want the power, but I don't need all the power because I don't need to do any sort of wheeling going, you know, on an on-ramp. Uh, so I leave it on touring mode. The bike tends to be a little bit softer, a little more approachable with still plenty of power. Enduro mode is for people like myself that love to take these things off-road. It is unbelievably capable off-road and you can go in here and really really kind of play along and uh and you know change it to your specific kind of ways the one thing i will say is i've learned for my particular kind of riding the traction control uh i really like to turn it on off the multi strata tends to be a little bit more conservative with its traction control as opposed to the, as opposed to the desert x so if you're going to be using this bike off-road a lot and you find yourself riding on washboard type gravel roads uh, the traction control may kind of get in your way. So one is pretty great. Uh, off is obviously completely off. So that's again, uh, I would say tread lightly and kind of start with two, which is the factory setting and see how it works for you. And if you don't like it, just pull over really quick, get in this menu, try one or off if you, uh, if you think you are a rider that can handle that. So we're gonna press one, go over, and now this is sort of set up for my sort of riding. The ABS on Enduro mode is from the factory set to one, which is only front wheel. It allows you to slide the rear end around, um, you know, kind of play around a little bit with the bike and be able to steer it on dirt and gravel better with the rear brake. Same thing with uh, wheelie control. It is actually off on enduro mode. So you can lift the front end up and get it over logs and whatnot uh, as however, you know, whatever kind of riding condition that you may be in. So they find it that it works better on off. Otherwise, the rest of it is pretty similar to the, to the other uh, setups. So go through it and set it up exactly how you like it. I know the engine is on low power on a 170 horsepower V4 bike off-road. I have personally played with it on medium and high, and I just find myself digging a lot of holes with the rear tire, as opposed to where it's on low, it's a lot friendlier for the off-road situation. So uh, if you've got a sense of humor and you wanna play around on high or medium on off-road enduro mode, have at it. Let me know how it is. I'm kinda curious to hear your stories, but for time being, we'll leave it on low. Um, and then we'll go to um, urban mode. 
Urban mode is uh, great for a bike that's super manageable around town. A lot of people want to say that this bike is too big and too powerful for town. I beg to differ. It is actually just the smoothest, most approachable machine in the world, especially if you have it in urban mode. It's the lowest amount of power, highest amount of ABS and traction control, the highest amount of uh, anti-wheelie control on the thing, just to make it really, really easy to ride around town without worrying too much about being overpowered or you know, uh, just kind of overwhelmed on the bike. And again, you can go through this and change it all you want. If you like your urban mode to have high power, well then go for it. You can put it on high power, but I would suggest low just to make it an easy bike to ride. And that pretty much covers the riding modes. If you have any questions on those, let us know. We'll cover more of it. But get in there and kind of play with that and uh, don't be too um, scared of it. Once you're done with the riding modes, uh, again, joystick left. And now you can go into things like info display. Uh, this has different options. Uh, if you want to have you know, one thing highlighted over other, depending on what you want to look at on the screen, you really can go in here and change this up to your uh, liking. I kind of like the total because it has all the information on there. Some people complain that there's too much, but just like any other motorcycle or car I've ever been in, you get used to it pretty quickly. I'll go over that screen with you pretty um, in depth if you want me to, but it's, you know, spend about five minutes and look at the bike and you'll get to used to it pretty quickly. Fuel indicator. So on this, you can either have it on level or range. Level will just have the bars and it'll show you what kind of level your fuel is at. Uh, range will just give you a number. You know, whether it's 200 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles, it'll just let you know and it'll change obviously based on how much throttle you put into the bike and what kind of riding condition you're in. Uh, DRL is your daytime running lamp. I like to leave this on auto. Um, if you press the right switch with a little light on there, it will automatically take it out of auto and put it in manual. The bike will assume that you want to take control of what the daytime running lamps are, are like. I put it on manual, or rather, I'm sorry, I put it on auto because I'm lazy and I like this a lot better. The backlight is just for the display. You can kind of change how much backlighting you have on this one. Uh, if you're in a really sunny area and you want to have, you know, have a clear view of the dash display, 100% is the way to go. But if you want to have a little bit less, obviously you can select it and you can see it will change based on which you want it on and what kind of sensitivity you may have to light. Pin code. We talked about it a little bit earlier. If you press that, it will change have you modified. So if you tell it to modify, if your bike is brand new, your current pin will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So all I'm doing is pressing in on the joystick and it's doing that. Once I get to the last zero and press the joystick again, it'll say correct because that's the factory one and you can enter a new one. So on this one, we'll just go back to 0, 0, 0 because this bike is not yet sold. And then you press it again and it's saved and boom, that's how you set your pin. If you want to change it, again, we were pressing it in. You were telling it what the current is. It'll say it's correct. And then if you want to go up and down, just the joystick up or down and it will let you go from zero to nine. It is strictly numerical, not alphanumerical. So again, we're not going to change this. So we'll just do zero, 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 zero and saved. Boom. All right. And then we go to blind spot detection. Again, it's on or off. Uh, I would definitely say leave it on off, or rather on on rather, uh, just so people can see, you know, you can tell if somebody's sneaking up on you, behind you, and to the side of you. It's really, really, really great to have it. So we'll turn it on. And then we're gonna go down to the dimmer. The dimmer has to do with the mirrors. Um, the higher it is, the brighter they are, the more it can get your attention. I really would recommend leaving it on high. It's a good way to make sure you're nice and safe so that your blind spot uh, does not sneak up on you. Date and time, again, your dealership should have this set for you, but you can set the dates. You can set the date format if you like to have date, uh, day, month, year, or month, day, year, or vice versa. Set the time and the time format if you like to have it 12 hours or 24 hours, depending on what you're more used to. Again, you just press it in, you go to it, and you can go up and down and change the numbers uh, to exactly what you want. That is most of the settings menu. I'm gonna go over how to set up your phone next. All right, first things first, before you get your phone connected to your motorcycle, you need to download two apps. One of them is going to be Ducati, oh, I gotta learn how to spell, Connect. So, Ducati Connect, I've already downloaded it, but this is what you need, Ducati Connect, it's a utility. Uh, this will help the phone connect to the actual motorcycle. The other one is Sygic, S-Y-G-I-C, it's a map system. Again, I have it already on mine, 
Uh, so side jig, uh, GPS navigation is what you're looking for. And so those are the two apps you're going to need to be able to connect to your phone. And I'll show you why here in a second. Okay, now we're going to uh, pair our phone to our motorcycle. Obviously make sure that your Bluetooth is on and your Wi-Fi as well and you'll see why here in a second. So we're going to go uh, back into settings menu. We're going to scroll down or up, doesn't matter, it kind of goes, it's a circular thing, uh, to the Bluetooth option. Press that in and you're going to see a couple of options here. There's pairing and paired devices. Currently there's no uh, phones uh, paired to this motorcycle. So we're going to hit pairing and we're going to tell it phone and it's going to look for a phone. So there's nothing, uh, there's no devices uh, done to this yet. So it's kind of telling you to wait. Uh, I'm going to go into the Bluetooth setting on my phone and see what comes up here. Ah, it found my phone. So I'm going to press in on the joystick and it is now pairing with my phone. Give it a second. Now it's going to tell you to make sure you pair it. So you're going to hit pair here and accept on the phone. And now they are paired. If you look on the screen, it'll tell you my phone's name, Shambe, which is Farsi for Saturday. That's the day I was born. And then, uh, so now if you go to paired devices, you'll see my phone is attached to it. So that's step number one of pairing your phone with uh, your Ducati Multistrada V4S. Let's go to step number two. All right, so the next step in your phone connection. Now the phone is connected. If you look on the screen, you will see uh, on the top right display next to the fuel indicator, a couple of blue little lights. One of them is the phone, the other one's the battery. It looks like my battery is about halfway dead. And then you're gonna see how many bars you have uh, for your connectivity. So it looks like I have about, I don't know, three bars. That's great. So next thing you're gonna do is go, if you remember, you downloaded Ducati Connect. So you're gonna open Ducati Connect. And it's gonna try to connect. It says vehicle Wi-Fi is not known yet, so they gotta learn about each other. So you're gonna hit connect, and it's gonna tell you, hey, I wanna to connect to this motorcycle. You're gonna tell it join. Connecting Wi-Fi. It's kind of a two-sided handshake between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on this motorcycle. And now Ducati Connect would like to find and connect devices on your local network. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it allow. It's thinking, it's thinking. And boom, we're connected. Now, here's what you're gonna notice. Once you're connected, if you scroll up on this top screen, Ducati Connect it is, is now officially highlighted. This is why this is important. When you press on it, you're gonna see your screen changes all together. Now you have your music, your contacts, and your phone. So you can use just this uh, setup here instead of ever having to use your phone again. You can kind of put your phone away if you want to. You'll notice this screen still has all the information you want. It's gonna have on the top left your fuel, your, what mode your bike is in, how much suspension you have, and then slowly as you go to the right, you'll see how much, how, what speed you're going, what gear you're in, what kind of connection your phone has, the time, uh, what RPM the bike's at, and then we're gonna go down to the engine temperature and then kind of work our way to the left. You'll see if the uh, daytime running lamp is on auto, you can see it's green, it's got a little A on there. Air temperature, it's 69 degrees Fahrenheit in here. And then in the middle, you've got your music, contacts, phone, and Sijek GPS navigation. We're gonna press that. And your phone will turn on Sijek on its own and it's gonna tell you, hey, you would like to access your device. We're gonna tell it allow. And if you look on the screen, we now have Sijek on there. You now have your, your navigation on there. If you want to get out of the screen, we're back to using our little joystick. That joystick does everything on this motorcycle. You're gonna press left and hold left, and you're out of that screen. And then if you press left and hold left one more time, you're back to your regular full screen. There's a reason I like this full screen, as I was saying earlier. It has all the information I want on there, and it's all really clean and concise and clear. So really, really kind of easy to deal with. Um, so that is the part that kind of scares a lot of people because there's multiple steps that we have to take in that we have to download Ducati Connect, we have to download Sijek, and then we have to go on our actual motorcycle and kind of connect our motorcycle to our phone two different ways, two different times. Now, if you notice on my phone, it says it's on vehicle mode and it's connected to the vehicle. As long as this screen is on, you will be connected to the motorcycle via your phone. If you want to get out of this, you can swipe up 
and it'll take you into phone mode and it'll actually connect, you know, uh, disrupt the connection between the motorcycle and the phone. Um, so this will allow you to have connect, uh, you know, constant connection with the bike. You just basically put your phone away, whether it's on a clip on the motorcycle or in your pocket and you have access to it via your dash. If you have any other questions on this one let me know and uh, we can kind of follow along with that one but that's the hardest part of this thing and most people kind of have a little bit of a road bump that i like to go over so i hope this helped you on that one all right let's talk about a couple of neat features on the multistrada that you might have forgotten about in the process of buying the bike it happens a lot so we'll keep it really simple uh, one of the neatest things on the bike and one of my favorite things is the actual windscreen on the bike um, Back when they first made the Multistrada, you had to like use these knobs to open and close and bring it up and down. And then they created like kind of a pinch thing. Now, literally one finger on this little guy right here. If you pull up on it, it'll bring it up. If you push down on it, it'll bring it down. If you heard, it's got little teeth so you can put it different levels. It's got about five different levels on there. So really, really great, depending on what height you are to set it at the uh, height that you want it. There's not one any, any one right answer for everybody, so make sure it's set up well for you. Uh, a lot of people ask, does this bike buff it? No, not at all like the older Multistratas especially. They've really figured it out. If you want, there is a shorter enduro screen or a taller touring screen, again, based on your riding style, so make sure you get the one that's right for you. So that's the windscreen. Next thing I wanna go over is the actual physical dash display and how you can actually adjust it. There is a little knob down here. Currently it's on the up position. If you go down here and pull on this guy, just kind of twist it to the right or the left, you'll see it go up and down. So it comes in handy if it's uh, sunny behind you and you got a lot of glare, it'll let you adjust it just to be able to look Clear, more clearly at the actual uh, LCD display. To the very right of that, there is a little opening for a Euro-sized um, power socket. So if you wanna charge anything else up, you got an auxiliary socket there to be able to charge up things like your navigation or your phone or anything like that that you wanna put up here on the face of the motorcycle. All right, next, on top of the tank, you have three different items to kind of work with. They're all pretty simple, but we'll, we'll go through them nicely for you. So, the Multistrada is a keyless bike, but it does come with a key. You just press this little button and the key comes out, and this key is made to rule them all. It will open your tank. If you don't have the uh, Ducati remote tank uh, option, uh, it'll open your seat, it'll open your bags, it'll do all kinds of neat things for you. So don't lose this, it's very important. Uh, the other thing is that the ignition on the bike, again, works with a keyless system. So as long as this fob is with you, uh, within about five feet of the motorcycle, um, you'll actually have a little spot here on the right side of the dash that is where the actual receptor is for the key. But as long as it's within about five feet of that, you can turn the bike on and off and your ignition switch is actually right here uh, between the handlebar and the uh, fuel filler. So if you twist it to the left, things get exciting. The bike's on now, the auxiliary is on. If you wanna turn it on, on and off, you have your, you have your actual uh, ignition switch on the right side of the handlebar. But, um, so now it's on and you can kinda of start playing with the electronics of the motorcycle or at least get ready for your ride. If you don't want to ride anymore and you're done and you wanna turn the bike off, you just simply go to the left again and it'll give you a little message on the display. And one of them is if you turn the handlebar all the way to the right or to the left and hold this to the left, you hear a little noise. Steering is locked now. So again, if you want to turn that off, you hit it one more time. And now the bike's back on. The steering is unlocked and you can do it on either side. So we're gonna turn it off. We're gonna hold it. And now it's locked on this side. Kind of neat that you can do it on both sides. Nice little safety feature. And again, we're gonna unlock it and bring it back to the middle. Um, again, the key will help you get into your gas tank. You can get an optional Ducati Performance uh, keyless tank entry. It's a pretty nifty little thing, so you don't have to keep looking for this key in your pockets if you're out there touring. Uh, definitely would recommend that. And then the other little neat trick of the motorcycle is that it has a little pocket right here. Um, the pocket does have a USB port in there, so you can keep your phone or other electronics charged in here. Uh, word to the wise, I've kind of learned this the hard way. This does not have any real venting in it, so your phone will get hot if you leave it in here on, on hot days. So do with that as you will, but you do that, have, have that option if you want to. It is waterproof, so your phone can stay nice and dry, but again, remember that it doesn't really vent that well. Uh, and then if you want to close it, you just press it down and boom, that is your uh, physical spots on the tank and whatever you have to work with on here. 
One of the coolest features that the Multistrada V4S comes with is the center stand. Um, it comes in handy for me when I'm on the long rides and I want to clean the chain, lube it up, uh, pack my bike, unpack it. It just makes the bike nice and steady for me, uh, you know, nice and straight. So a lot of people are a little bit scared of how to put the bike up and down from the center stand, and I'll show you how to do it. Now, a little disclaimer, I am about 230 pounds, so I may make this look a little bit easier, but it's really not that hard. I've seen with enough practice just about anybody do it, and the way they've set it up on this bike, it's one of the most neutral feeling ones that I've ever worked with to uh, bring it up and down. So first things first, pick the bike up. That's it, just uh, kind of put it in its, uh, square on its tires, put your right foot on the extension on the center stand and get yourself kind of centered on the motorcycle, get close to the bike. Um, you can kind of feel the bike settle on the center stand. Um, it's a weird thing to say, but you can kind of feel it straighten itself a little bit up. Um, grab the rear uh, handlebar, the rear handle, grab handle and the handlebar, and then put all your way down. Do not pull up on the bike. You're not that strong. I'm not that strong. So put all your way down as you gently bring the bike up towards you. And just like that, it's on its center stand, ready to go. And if you want to take it off the center stand, um, I'm on a slippery surface. So I'm going to kind of put my foot here, but all you got to do is bring it forward and you're ready to go. Pretty easy. Show me your videos of how you do it. I'll just do it one more time. I'm gonna take the kickstand off, put my foot on the center stand peg, and then square off the bike, push down, and up it goes. Voila, easy peasy. All right, so your US spec Ducati Multistrada V4S is going to have front and rear facing radars on there. Uh, this little square box here uh, and the one in the back are going to be how you're gonna use your uh, adaptive cruise control and your blind spot monitoring system. I bring this up only for one real reason. Keep these clean. Uh, this is really important for those of us that live in a rainier area or if you're like me and like to go off-roading on the bike. If this gets really, really dirty, it'll give you a warning that it's not working on the dash. So all you gotta do just wipe it off, keep it clean, and you're good to go. And same thing on the back. So if you follow me to the back of the bike, right under the tail light, you have a little spot here. Again, just keep it clean. Doesn't take much. Uh, make sure you don't get too much mud and muck and whatnot on there uh, so that the blind spot monitoring system can work nice and well for you. And that's it. All right, that concludes our intro and explanation on how to use your Ducati Multistrada V4S. Again, if you have any questions, don't be shy about reaching out. Our phone number is 503-292-7488. We're here to answer all your questions, no matter how big or small. Have a great day.